I think we're just about ready to get started, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to our speakers for today, Ash Beatty and Hal Good. Great. Thanks, Yanisa, for the uh, introduction. And hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm uh, very happy to have Hal Good here with me. Hal, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a real privilege to join this and uh, to help emphasize the importance of cooperative procurement in today's world and the importance to all practitioners. Great, and thanks again for joining Hal. Um, Hal and I are in different locations. Also joining us is Raj Sharma, founder and CEO of Public Spend Forum. I've asked Raj to chime in uh, here and there, wherever he feels like, and um, I'm sure he'll be sure to do that. Hello, everyone. So as we get started, um, this is a, the first webinar in a series of webinars on cooperative procurement. This particular webinar is an introduction to the cooperative data that we have that we've uh, recently pulled into GovShop. I'll be talking about what is GovShop when I do a brief overview of Public Spend Forum. And uh, we'll be focusing today's webinar on an overview of the various types of cooperative uh, organizations, product service delineations, and uh, cooperative contracts and suppliers that participate that we have in GovShop. In the future, we'll have additional webinars that take a deeper dive into individual product service areas and how to search for cooperative contracts for individual uh, areas of, of procurement. Uh, next week, we have a, a second webinar scheduled, which is gonna focus on audiovisual conferencing. To get started, I'd like to uh, just uh, level set us uh, very briefly on what is GovShop and provide an overview of Public Spend Forum. So Public Spend Forum developed GovShop. Uh, Public Spend Forum, very briefly, is a market intelligence and best practices platform geared specifically for public sector buyers and suppliers. And uh, on Public Spend Forum, you can find uh, lots of rich information pertaining to market intelligence, best practices on various aspects of public procurement. And uh, most notably, within the market and supplier intelligence part of Public Spend Forum's mission, we've developed a GovShop to facilitate market research within public procurement as, as a means of uh, supplier discovery for public sector buyers. Uh, broadly speaking, you can see that the Public Spend Forum's mission is to bring together suppliers and buyers more efficiently and more effectively and to reduce barriers associated with search and uh, knowledge and understanding uh, what, what markets look like and more specifically as it pertains to GovShop, what suppliers participate in what markets. And so GovShop is a free research tool, again, designed for government to find and research a comprehensive set of suppliers for any market. I'll be, while I'm going to be focusing on cooperative procurement as part of this webinar, we'll inevitably be looking at aspects of GovShop that facilitate identifying suppliers and looking at supplier information. The background behind developing GovShop was really the fundamental market research problem. So as we've been engaging with government buyers over a number of years and uh, nearly two decades actually, uh, there's three fundamental issues that come up in terms of the problems associated with conducting effective market research. The first is a lack of time or limitations on time. You know, there's never enough time to get everything done that you wanna get done. The second is that markets, supply markets specifically that is, change a lot, They're, they they change in terms of their dynamics, in terms of competitive dimensions, in terms of changing cost structures, and most notably, they change in terms of what suppliers provide products and services. Suppliers come and go, sometimes they merge. Um, some markets have a lot of new and emerging suppliers that come in, and so just keeping up with it can be a challenge. And then finally, to actually do a market analysis or market research effectively, oftentimes requires going to lots of different sources to piece together the information and paint that picture that government buyers are looking for to understand a market and to inform the procurement strategy and execution. And so GovShop was specifically designed, designed to address the supplier discovery part of the market research 
effort and to address those same problems that I just went over. And so just very briefly, GovShop is a free browser-based search engine. Anyone can access GovShop and start performing searches on GovShop by product or service area and a couple of other ways of searching that I'll elaborate on and identify suppliers based on whatever the need is. So anyone can access it and it's free to access. It's built specifically with the government in mind and it's open to everyone. Uh, within GovShop, you can expect to find comprehensive supplier research. So that means comprehensive listings of suppliers by product or service category. Uh, right now, we have just under 800,000 total suppliers on GovShop that have been pulled together from a variety of different sources and techniques and methods that we're employing. We're looking at uh, public sources of information. We're looking at automated ways of identifying suppliers through AI through machine learning and a variety of other techniques that we use, in addition to having a core group of uh, researchers that also help in identifying suppliers, particularly important in markets where we see a lot of current, uh, where we see a lot of emerging suppliers. Um, cybersecurity would be an example of that, for example. And of course, we know that there are some supply markets that are not as much in flux, but the important thing is to have a well rounded, comprehensive view of suppliers. I alluded earlier that there's multiple ways of searching in GovShop. You can search by keyword. Say I want to buy office supplies or public safety equipment or vehicles, whatever the case might be. You can perform keyword searches. You can also search by category codes that you might most be familiar with. We have MIGP codes, which is uh, most often and extensively used within uh, local procurement as well as state procurement. We also have PSC codes used heavily in the federal sector. And we have NAIX codes as well, which is used across uh, state, local, federal government. We also have a couple of other code systems or um, our, our categorization systems, but those are the three ones that I just wanted to mention off the top. And then more, most specifically and most relevant for this webinar today is the ability to search by contract vehicles or just contract groupings and national cooperative contracts or co-ops in general, I should say, Cooperative contracts is one example of being able to search uh, by contract vehicle. And that's what we're going to spend the bulk of our time in uh, today looking at. Let me now move into talking about cooperative contracts. Before I show you what we have currently on GovShop and talk a little bit about what we're planning to load, uh, just to level set everyone on cooperative procurement. I purposely pulled uh, some a couple, just a little bit of material from the NIGP uh, site. So this is part of NIGP's body of knowledge, just to make sure that we're on the same page when we talk about cooperative procurement. NIGP lays out cooperative procurement and defines it in a couple of different ways. On the one hand, it could be two or more organizations, entities, jurisdictions getting together, putting their requirements together, and then engaging the supply market together with a goal of collaboratively putting in place a contract that they can all use. And so, so obviously that, uh, that type of cooperative procurement requires coordinated effort. And it's basically conducting the entire procurement process, but in a joint way where members that participate can benefit ultimately from uh, pooling their volume, their requirements, and ultimately having a common contract that they can use. The second aspect of cooperative procurement, which is what we're focused on with GovShop, is what's referred to here on this slide as piggyback cooperatives. And that is where two or more entities can actually access a common contract that was put in place by a third party, be it a jurisdiction or any other third party for that matter, which, uh, which allows for multiple organizations and jurisdiction types, be it state, local, county, et cetera, educational institutions, to use that contract. Just a quick caveat there, um, some jurisdictions might restrict the use of cooperative contracts, so you just wanna be cognizant of that. But here I just wanted to level set ourselves that we're talking about the piggybacking of contracts for purposes of today's discussion. Hal or Raj, any comments before I keep going? I think one of the things that those of us that have been around public procurement for quite a bit of time is one of the key aspects of what we used to look at was make or buy. Do we produce what, it, what we're 
uh, securing internally? Do we make it or do we contract out for it? And I think in today's world, more and more, uh, one of the key questions that we have to answer is, are we going to solicit ourselves? Are we going to compete with ourselves? Or are we going to utilize a cooperative contract? And I think that that's part of the due diligence in today's world, uh, especially for in a world where we're more and more strapped for resources, or we are lacking in subject matter expertise on certain subjects. And so rather than think that we can compete everything that we're going to utilize ourselves, we, the logical thing to do and probably the smart thing to do in most cases is to at least investigate whether there's a cooperative contract out there that we can utilize. And then part of the due diligence is then to look at what we're trying to accomplish for our own purposes. Make sure that if we locate a cooperative contract that matches with what our objectives are and most importantly, before we do anything, we need to look at the legalities of it. Was it put together by someone that put it together in a manner that we can participate in it? And was it advertised? Was it transparent? Is it something that we'd be comfortable with? And if we solicited ourselves and uh, the contracts that we're going to be talking about today are basically from national cooperatives that have committed to a standard and they have transparent uh, online ability to look at how they were competed, to look at what the award process is, to verify that they were advertised. And so each of us though, in our own particular jurisdictions has to look at the legality of it and make sure that if we elect to use a cooperative contract, that it was uh, solicited in a manner that lives up to our rules and if it indeed is something that we can participate in. Great, thanks for that, Hal. Um, now I'm gonna dive in a little bit more specifically into the topic of cooperative contracts and then very quickly get to what do we have on GovShop in the way of cooperative contracts. Uh, very briefly, there's three big issues that uh, members in the community of public procurement have mentioned to us as it pertains to you know, them using cooperative contracts. And so the three themes that we hear over and over again are professionals telling us, well, I'm not really sure of all the cooperative organizations out there. I know which ones I use. I know of two or three, and maybe I'll hear about one or two others from some of my peers in um, related jurisdictions or in other organizations, but I don't really have a good view of all the different co-ops that are out there. So that was the first point that we've heard. The second key issue that we've heard is which cooperative org organizations have what contracts for what products and services. So that sometimes is a challenge. Um, well, the first, the first one obviously is a big one and that is what are all the co-ops out there? And then the second one is being able to quickly identify for product XYZ, what are all the different alternatives I might be able to explore and evaluate in the way of cooperative contracts. And then finally, of course, the related point is um, based on one and two, so who are all the suppliers that participate in cooperative contracts and for what product and service? And so we wanted to take these three issues and keep them in mind as we pull together our initial set of information on cooperatives and the data that we pulled together on cooperative contracts. And as Hal mentioned, we had to begin with an initial set of cooperative organizations that we pulled into GovShop, meaning the cooperative contract information that we pulled into GovShop. So we started with the national cooperatives, as Hal just mentioned. Uh, currently, we have a total of nine national co-ops loaded up. Uh, they're in the black font over here. Uh, there's two more that we're still in the process of loading in the data into GovShop on. So initially, in total, we'll have 11 shortly, but currently we have nine. Uh, right now. And um, again, we, we don't have any bias toward these cooperative organizations. We reached out to the community and asked what are the most commonly used cooperative contracts and no surprise, they tend to be the national co-ops uh, to begin with. Those are used uh, across the country, across jurisdictions from state, local jurisdictions, educational institutions, fire departments, police departments, etc. And um, they tend to cover a variety of different categories, ranging from the more common categories like 
professional services, facilities, office supplies, the more specialized categories. And so we began uh, with the national co-ops because they're the most broadly applicable. And that's uh, you know, pretty much where we got uh, the most of the feedback from experts and practitioners in public procurement. Our plan is to continue to expand the inclusion of more and more uh, cooperatives onto GovShop. But you know, we, here we just wanted to provide a very brief explanation as to which co-ops do we have currently, which, we'll, which you'll see in more detail in just, uh, in just a few moments. And uh, why did we begin with this list of co-ops? Okay, I'm now going to transition into showing you a variety of different screenshots that really illustrate the information that we have on GovShop as it relates to cooperative contracts. I'm going to take us through a logical hierarchy of that information. I'll begin with showing you screenshots of the listing of cooperative organizations. You've already seen the names of them, but you'll be able to see it within GovShop as a screenshot. Uh, drilling down deeper, each co-op has its own um, set of products or services that, that, that organizes the suppliers and the cooperative contracts. So we will be able to see examples of that. For each cooperative, we have some basic information such as contact information um, and digging deeper. We have individual suppliers that participate in various contracts within product or service area. So we'll be able to take a deep dive into that as well. And I'm just running through numbers one, two, three, and four as I speak to this. Uh, then we'll be able to dig into some more interesting functionality that GovShop has. And that is that once you've um, navigated your way through a cooperative organization, through product or service area, see a listing of suppliers that participate in a contract, you can actually filter uh, and search those suppliers more specifically to narrow them down. So there's a variety of filtering criteria that you can use on GovShop to narrow down what it is you might be looking for in terms of the um, initial set of suppliers or your listing of suppliers. And then finally, toward the end, what I'll do is I'll show you a very brief example of conducting a product or service search and searching across cooperatives. That we'll do a deeper dive on on subsequent webinars beginning with next week's webinar. But for right now, uh, this is not a training session, so I don't really expect people to be fully trained. Uh, it doesn't really take that much to, to, to actually get up to speed in GovShop. It's just a matter of just jumping in there and doing some of these searches on your own. My goal for today is to provide you with the intuition and the awareness of the information that's present in GovShop and um, how you can quickly access it and start identifying cooperative contracts on your own. Hal, if that sounds good, I'm going to dive right in. Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. So once again, uh, GovShop, you can access it by going to govshop.com. It's a very, very simple front end interface. There's uh, three key ways of searching. There is a keyword search box here in the, uh, it's, that's the white box that you see here. I can zoom in and zoom out a little bit here if that's helpful. You can also search by product and service offerings, uh, NIGP codes uh, more specifically, right? Various different code sets, NIGP, NAICS code, PSC codes. You can also search by contract vehicles. <clears throat> that's uh, in the center here of the screen. And that's where we have the co-op contracts categorized is right here in the center part. So if you were to actually go to govshop.com and click on the center search method, which is browse by contract vehicle, you'll come to the contracts page, which looks like this. And you can see here, we have a listing of a different uh, contract types. We call them contract vehicles, right? National cooperatives and contracts is one of the types. And obviously you can expand on it here to see a full listing of cooperatives that are there. Uh, before I do that, let me just point out that, and I'll come back to this at the end as well, I'm going to point out that we're actually, we'd like your input on expanding our listing of contract vehicles or cooperative organizations that we have covered. Uh, we'll definitely take that into account, just as we did in assembling the initial listing of cooperative organizations. 
we will need to sift through the input that we get and confirm the broad applicability because that's our starting point to make sure that whatever we include here is broadly applicable and utilized uh, across the country, across jurisdictions. We'll eventually get to a point where we have more and more cooperative organizations on GovShop. But let's come back over here then. So we're on the contracts page and what I'd like to do next is I wanna show you what happens when I click over here in National Cooperatives and Contracts. So I'm gonna zoom back out. And by the way, that's why I have the uh, presentation here in normal slide view as opposed to presentation mode so that I can actually zoom in and zoom out just a little bit. So once we uh, click on National Cooperatives and Contracts, you can click on it or actually expand on it is what I really should have said you'll see a listing of the current cooperative organizations that we have. Uh, here's the full 11. The top two say by board and choice partners. You'll see that it reads coming soon because that data has not yet been loaded. Uh, they're listed alphabetically, by the way, even the ones that are coming soon. That's why they appear on top. Uh, and then the following nine, I believe we have all of that contract data loaded and I'll explain to you what that means in just one moment. What is that data? What does that represent? So that was the first step. The first step was simply to expand national cooperatives and contracts and see the listing of the various cooperative organizations. Uh, let me just pause here for one second. So right now with all of the cooperative data that we have loaded from the nine co-ops, Collectively, that represents roughly 2,000 total suppliers participating in cooperative contracts across dozens of products and services categories. And we'll see the product service categories examples in just one second. I'll expand on one of these co-ops. After we load the two remaining co-ops that are coming soon, uh, that should effectively add another 2,000 unique suppliers. So total of roughly 4,000-ish suppliers. Uh, many of them, by the way, participate across multiple cooperatives in uh, common in the same product and service categories, as you can probably guess. Uh, some of them cover cut across products and service categories, but the supplier numbers that I'm mentioning right now are unique suppliers. Okay, let's, um, let's expand on the cooperative organization and see what, a, what information is displayed then underneath. And that would be, so here's an example, National Purchasing Partners, NPP Gov. So if you expand on any one of these co-ops, you'll see their own defined uh, product and service categories listed right below the cooperative itself. Uh, they, they all define the products and service categories a little bit differently. And I don't, I don't mean in terms of like facilities is called something else. I mean, they have cooperative contracts for different products and service categories. They don't exactly overlap. And so naturally you're going to see one set of listing for one co-op and a different listing for another. The reason I chose to expand MP, MPP Gov as an example is only because the fully expanded list of product service categories fits nicely on one slide. That's pretty much the only reason. Some of the co-ops have 30, 40 uh, products and service categories. And so uh, it wouldn't be as clean to show on this slide. So logically, what we're looking at then is within the contracts page, we've expanded the listing of cooperatives and now we've expanded, any one of the co-ops can be expanded to show what the products and service categories are. Generally speaking, this is how the cooperative contracts are also organized, but we'll take a look at how to get to the specific contract information in a few moments. Al, so far so good from your perspective? Yes, definitely. Okay, great. Next, what I'd like to do is I'm going to click on a specific product or service category. And so let's say I'm going to click on communications and technology as shown here. I realize that the font could be a little bit small on the screen, which is why I'm zooming in from time to time. And I'll zoom right back out again so we don't lose sight of where we are. So let's click on communications and technology and see what happens. If we click on that, that takes us to a page. Uh, this is the product services page, the product services communications and tech. And the co-op is MPP Gov. You can see the path up on the top here. And so what this page is meant to do is it's meant to list all of the suppliers that are within that product services category for this co-op. 
And so on the top part, I'll cover the top and bottom part of the, uh, the screen separately. The top part is just summary level information for that product or service category, in this case, communications and tech. It's a summary of what was listed on the co-op's website for who can use. Um, in many cases, the who can use doesn't really change from the product service level down to the specific contract level. And like I mentioned, in many cases, the contract is tied to the product service category. You'll also see some other information in terms of, uh, for example, the organization point of contact with a phone number here off to the right part of the screen. It may not be immediately visible. So I'm zooming in just a little bit. Let's see what else we, uh, we have on this page. I'm gonna highlight one more thing on the product services page. And that would be um, over here on the left, you'll see that there's a, it summarizes that in this example, there's 20 suppliers on the communications and technology page for this co-op organization. All 20 suppliers are listed here. You just need to scroll down to see all 20 of them. Next, what I'd like to do is to click on an individual supplier. So I'll just click on the first one that appeared and that's Harris. So if I click on that supplier, we can see some, inf some information about that supplier. And by the way, this'll be, this'll be supplier views of any supplier in GovShop. Um, some of them have more detailed information, um, especially if a supplier provided much more detailed information about themselves. But uh, in short, when you click on a supplier, the top part of the supplier profile, which is meant to be a, 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 a summary resume of the supplier, if you will, it's got a description of what the supplier does. It's got below that, I'm zooming in, below that it's got some keywords that correspond to some of the key capabilities or offerings of the supplier. Below that, some basic data on the supplier, including their DUNS number, the employee size, it's a range actually, we have a, we have a handful of ranges that we tag against these suppliers, their annual revenue range, the year, the year founded. So just based some very basic data on the supplier, as well as below that, we have some contact info on the supplier, uh, phone number, address. The degree of detail might vary slightly across suppliers, but some very basic supplier information. So we haven't yet seen the, um, the co-op contract information yet. So if we scroll down the supplier profile, I'll just take us to the next slide. At the, toward the bottom of the supplier profile, we're able to see the actual contract information. So this is now, we're now drilling down to be able to see the cooperative contract information. You can see here in the center, the contract number. More specifically, who can use down to the contract level. Uh, oftentimes this may not vary, right, for the cooperative itself, between the, between the cooperative level down to the contract level, it may not vary, but still it's important to check that to see which jurisdictions can use this cooperative contract. Uh, we also have some other information such as a managing organization, expiration date. By the way, if the expiration date is passed, it, the contract would not even show up here um, in GovShop, as you can imagine. Um, there is some other information that's very useful in the supplier profile. I don't mean to gloss over it, but you might have noticed right above the contract information, there's some other richness of information you'll find, such as the ownership profile for the supplier uh, to see if it has any kind of minority designation or if it's veteran owned or woman owned. We also have some formal government set aside uh, categorizations, uh, most of which are provided by the Small Business Administration. Also the Veterans Administration certifies a, a couple of these. Uh, so there's a quite a bit of richness in the supplier profile, but for purposes of today, I really wanted to hone in on the, on the cooperative contract specific information. So just to summarize, and I'll pause in just one second in case uh, Raj or Hal has a comment. We went from looking at a listing of cooperatives on the, co on the contracts page to expanding a cooperative to see what products or service categories are listed for that particular cooperative. Then we actually clicked on the product services page to see a listing of all the suppliers that participate on the given contract. And then of course we clicked on the supplier to see the supplier profile, including 
the cooperative contract data that you can find in the supplier profile. I think one of the important things in today's world that we need to look at closely is the importance of the detail for each contract that we're proposing to utilize. Because uh, there's possibility, in fact, the likelihood is that contracts for the same service, let's say the most common one that people use in cooperative is everybody pretty much uses or is familiar with uh, cooperative contracts for office supplies. And you say, okay, if I found a contract for office supplies from one cooperative, why should I look at all the rest? Well, even with the same provider, in my experience, I've seen that there's a difference in individual pricing or individual delivery terms or frequency and so forth. Even if it's from the same provider, depending on the contract, who solicited it and what values they put as the, at the top of their list in terms of what they were trying to accomplish in their particular solicitation. So the importance of being able to go in and compare cooperative contracts for the same item, if you're uh, looking at a particular item or service, is so important because they do vary. And one of the secrets that I think most of us adopt as we get more and more experienced is we look for people that have similar needs and we look at what they're using and we get familiar with uh, what uh, matches up the best with our needs because you can get the economy of scale and pricing but best value is many times in the details the service details or the variation in the individual pricing uh, and that was going to vary according to what uh, the solicitation called for. Yeah, absolutely, Hal. Um, in fact, one of the <clears throat> excuse me, one of the key themes that we hear <clears throat> from public procurement professionals is, uh, yes, I, I use cooperative contracts. <clears throat> it seems to work fine, but I'm not sure <clears throat> um, if I've compared them across all the different cooperative contracts available for, for example, office supplies. And so I'm not sure if I'm using the one that best meets my needs. I'm just using the one that I'm familiar with. And so uh, we, we hear that quite a bit. Absolutely. Let's um, next. Ash, um, this is Raj. I wanted to chime in on a couple of things. Um, hi, everyone. This is Raj Sharma. I'm the, I'm the founder and CEO. Uh, just uh, I think a couple of things came up in the Q&A, too. Um, but in terms of just first the profile, um, just wanted to mention Kind of an overarching point. Now, when when we started thinking about you know the goal of GovShop, two things I think Ash has been able to go through and show you really how you can search for and find contract vehicles um, within a profile and also through our contract search. But you know, as we were building out the repository, one of our goals has been to really build a robust supplier resume. Let's call it. And, and because a lot of information exists in so many places. And so, you know, there's a lot of general information you can find in many databases, but our goal is to go way beyond that and really give you a robust set of data across each supplier. It's a very ambitious goal. It's going to take time, um, but in, that's what, in, as, as Ash was walking through a profile, um, uh, those are some of the elements that make up uh, a robust resume, the general information, the contract information, capabilities information, over time past performance information. Um, so if you have any feedback on that, do let us know. We've been gathering a lot of input over time uh, from um, users, and that's how we've come up with really what should go into a profile. And uh, the second thing I just wanna mention is um, and some questions about you know, how we get paid, et cetera. And um, some of you may have seen the answers in the chat, um, but I just wanted to point out, so we, uh, Public Spend Forum, you know, has been around four years and we funded much of the initial work ourselves because we believe in the public mission. Um, I think we work with many of the leaders that are actually on, uh, on the line right now or many leaders that you all work for or know. Uh, we funded a lot of the work um, ourselves because we really, believe in the mission of public procurement and, and the impact it can have on really uh, helping, um, 
helping citizens, helping mission of government. But, um, but since then, uh, our business model is um, we can't fund this work forever ourselves. So we are uh, now, um, so our, our government uh, receives all the data for free. Um, and so you can go, go on GovShop, no account required, or you can create an account um, for free and you can search all the data. Uh, suppliers similarly can go on, uh, search GovShop. Uh, and claim their profile or create a profile if it doesn't exist. Uh, then we do have a subscription service where you can upgrade your profiles. So where suppliers uh, give us a nominal fee. Um, so that's part of our business model. So government free, suppliers mostly free, but there's a subscription that we just rolled out. Um, so, so that's how uh, the business model works. And we are testing out, as I mentioned in the chat, uh, advertising as well. Um, so, uh, so those are different ways that uh, we're really funding our efforts. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Raj. And uh, just to just to underscore that subscription is at the it's at the supplier specific level, and um, there's there's no other there's no other subscription besides supplier specific. Okay, let's do this. Let's pick up where we were. Uh, next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back to that listing, the supplier listing that we had when we were looking at the product or service category page for this particular co-op. And there's one more thing I want to highlight for everybody on um, this listing of 20 suppliers. I'm basically just going back to that higher level up, one level higher than we were a moment ago. And that's this here in the center. So in this example, we have 20 suppliers that came up under this co-op's communications and tech product service category. You'll notice this, um, this button here in the center. It says browse and filter suppliers. So <clears throat> I'd like to show you what happens when we invoke the, uh, the filtering capability within GovShop. So if you were to click on browse and filter suppliers, you'll go to a page with the same listing of the same 20 suppliers, except now you're able to see a whole bunch of filtering elements here to the left or filtering dimensions. Uh, they range from things like some of the things that we've been talking about. You can filter on the, the formal official government set-aside programs. Uh, SDVOSB, by the way, is Service Disabled Veteran-Owned Small Business. That's a mouthful. Uh, that's a uh, Veterans Affairs uh, certification. And there's other small business certifications here. I know a lot of um, state and local government reference those uh, just the same. Uh, there's other filters uh, aligned with ownership type, uh, minority ownership that is, and just general veteran owned uh, ownership or woman owned veteran uh, ownership rather, if, whether you're certified or not, you can still filter based on uh, those ownership dimensions, whether the official certification exists or not, and that's separate from the official certification. There's other filters. Um, if you were to scroll down the list of filter dimensions, there's a filter on location served by state. We're looking to expand that in the future and make it even more specific, but for right now, it's the location served by state. And there's a few more filters as well, such as the revenue tier filter, where you can specifically select suppliers from various revenue tiers, like less than 1 million, 1 to 10 million, things like that. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what they are, but there's a variety of things you can do. Now, in this example, practically speaking, there's only 20 suppliers. I mean, you can still derive value from doing some filters if you were you know, specifically looking at a minority supplier award. Obviously, this, the filters here would help you see that. There's going to be other cases where you might have a listing of suppliers that, that's in the hundreds, right? And you need to whittle that down a little bit more based on filtering along these dimensions that might matter for the specific procurement that you're working on. So that capability is also here in GovShop, and I wanted to point that out. Okay, next, what I'd like to do is I want to now tee up for the following webinars that will come a keyword search. So let's say I just wanted to, now, now, you, now that you know that we have on the contracts page, you can access the national co-ops and contract section, you can expand it to see a listing of co-ops, you can expand the individual co-ops further to see a listing of that co-ops products and service category. So we've already gone through all that. Now we're taking a step back, we're going back to the contracts page and we're saying, okay, what if I just wanted to search for something I'm buying, say it's facilities, for example, 
And <clears throat> what does GovShop do when I type in facilities? And then specifically, I want to know what the search results are within cooperative contracts. So what happens when we do that? So we're on the contract page and here you can see this is a keyword search window on the contracts page. And in this example, we would be typing in facilities. By the way, I'm purposely not doing this on the site in case I have any connectivity issues. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm not actually going to GovShop and doing it on the site. We chose to do it in slide format instead. Okay, I type in facilities here and let's see what happens. So the search results I get back within the co-ops and contracts section, you can see it right here. Every single co-op that has a categorization that includes the word facilities, you'll see it highlighted. And right off, right off the bat, with one view, you're able to see across the co-ops which ones you might want to go and investigate further. Uh, I only typed in facilities and so uh, the results that I get back could be some combination of products, be it MRO or services or any combination of the two. But in one view, and this is the Hal's point earlier that he was making uh, you know, several moments ago, with just one view and one keyword search, be it facilities, be it office supplies, be it technology, IT, or what have you, you can quickly see uh, where you might be able to explore further and see uh, what suppliers are participating in what contract and uh, access the contract particulars, uh, meaning contract number, who can use, things like that. Good. At this point, that should give you a quick overview and uh, just some basic intuition around the type of information that's been pulled together across multiple cooperatives. Um, again, we currently have um, upwards of 2,000 suppliers across dozens of products and service categories as it pertains to cooperative uh, procurement. And so um, it's, please do go on GovShop, give it a try for yourself, give us, uh, give us uh, some feedback. Um, anything that you want us to know, just let us know. As a reminder, as we expand the cooperative contracts that are available on GovShop, we would like your input. And you can go back to GovShop on the contracts main page right in the center. If you click that link where it says suggest your contract vehicle, it'll take you to a very brief feedback form where you can pretty much, you know, tell us, you can just say hello if you want or, you know, specify what you think might be a useful uh, cooperative to add on. Uh, we'll take all of it into, into account because that's really how we identified the initial list of cooperative organizations to begin with. But we very much want to make sure that um, as a matter of priority, what we bring on in the GovShop, ideally I'd like to bring as much as I can at the same time, like all at once, but that's not practical. So we're bringing into GovShop things that are most broadly applicable across the public procurement community, first and foremost. And just as a reminder, this was the first in a series of webinars on cooperative procurement and how to use GovShop to identify cooperative procurement contracts. The next webinar is a week from today, same time, and we'll be taking a specific look at doing a keyword search on audiovisual conferencing equipment and services. <clears throat> and I'll show you how to use GovShop for that particular um, product slash service area, as well as all the other, uh, there's a ton of other information that I can show when we take a deep dive into product service areas. So we'll begin that next week and very likely we'll have additional webinars thereafter. Not, not, not necessarily every week, but at some reasonable cadence, maybe one a month thereafter. Okay, I know we began to dive into some questions already. Any other questions? Oh, we do have an additional question in the chat regarding the um, data and where it's coming from from the cooperatives. So the, the basically the, um, the data from the cooperatives is coming from the individual cooperatives public information. And uh, we're working across, you know, the targeted cooperative organizations and more to come. And uh, so we're, we're pulling it in that way. So the information that you see here is uh, information that you would see on the cooperatives websites. 
I think one of the important things is that we've created the capability here to go into each of the cooperatives uh, site and to be able to look at the whole uh, process from beginning to end in terms of solicitation and award and so forth. And some of the details that are not practical to look on a, uh, the, the basic information that's shared, you can then uh, do a deep dive into the detailed information off of the cooperatives uh, off of the site. I think one of the things from a long time pr practitioner that's so valuable to me in terms of a, of a tool like GovShop is first of all, it's free. I mean, that's always good when you're uh, in a government agency and there's limited resources. And then there's the complementary part. Uh, what we looked at today was whether uh, the product or service is available on a cooperative basis, but the other aspect of GovShop, which is complementary, is that you can also do searches. Uh, if you're gonna solicit yourself, you can also do searches for the product or service, even if you're intending to uh, solicit yourself and be able to uh, find suppliers um, providers and that's not we don't have time to go into that today but it's complementary and it's all part of, uh, of, of a value-added thing that I think is so important in terms of being able to do the due diligence uh, are we going to compete it are we going to use a cooperative and then have all the detail at our fingertips so that we can do all the all the process that uh, we have to do to satisfy the uh, requirements for our agencies to be able to do it and um, most competitive and efficient manner. Great, and a health point. Um, let's see, we were, this is the, this is the cooperatives product services page. And you'll notice the blue font here in the center of the screen. Uh, you can click on it and go to the cooperatives website for additional information. Great. Yanisa, any other questions? I'm not seeing any other questions uh, posted, but yes, please, we do have the time if there are any additional questions. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for attending. We really appreciate it. Uh, check out govshop.com and start uh, doing your own searches for cooperative contracts. Uh, before we sign off, I'm just gonna double check again. Um, I saw some flashing chat come in. Any other comments or questions that we need to address? We always get questions on if um, this video will be shared and everything and if the slides will be available. And yes, we will be sending an email with the recap uh, along with the recording and the slides. It's always useful to refer to the playback. Um, ultimately though, just a, maybe five to 10 minutes on browsing GovShop and taking a look at some of the searches on your own. And uh, you'll realize how streamlined and relatively easy it is to find what you're looking for. And, uh, and if not, then give us some feedback and we can take that into consideration and uh, work towards improving GovShop in a way that best suits um, you know, you know, public sector buyers. Thanks everyone, and we look forward to seeing you again on the subsequent webinars in this series. Have a good one. Thanks everyone.